having been in Hamas replica tunnels, I mean, just the from the soldier perspective, the claustrophobic feeling, which is really similar to uh, the tunnels that the American forces faced in Vietnam, where they were purposely made so small that Americans couldn't get in them, or, or you know, a normal sized person. But you know, I just felt so constrained by even entering the tunnel, unlike other tunnels I've been in. Uh, so I mean, there's a kind of a personal nightmare, but there's also a from strategic down the tactical nightmare as in what are the possibilities? What do you do for that problem? What is the solution? Even many of the historically used military solutions would be a nightmare scenario for the IDF to have to pick from, not knowing truly what's in all those tunnels. And it's not just, you know, maybe there'll be a tunnel experience. We know it's a fact that it's hundreds of miles of tunnels, a metro system is what they call it. Those standardized tunnels that are Hamas also lead to bunkers, offshoots, uh, places where they store vehicles, rockets that can be then moved by carts up to hidden launch sites, uh, those hidden attack sites. Absolutely. All those tunnels lead to cavernous spaces in which they will protect all their leadership, their fighters, their their equipment, uh, so this is the problem with you can't destroy Hamas military capability by bombing them from you know, from above. And any force, any policymaker, anything, you know, the solutions, there are there are lots of solutions. Why can't you just fill them with seawater? Egypt did that for the cross-border smuggling tunnels or sewage or concrete like Israel did in the north for Les uh, the Hezbollah tunnels. There are a lot of solutions, but none of them are feasible. Tear gas that we did in so in in Vietnam, that was one of our main solutions. The U.S. forces was to pump tear gas into tunnels, which is basically a, you know a death for anybody down there, even if it's not you know a, a you know an actual asphyxiation aspect of it. None of those are feasible options if there are non-combatants, as we know the hostages will be down there, civilians will be down there, not and. It, and a single enemy fighter can cause so much havoc and how much damage. And then lastly is that tunnel bombs. Uh, something I've written about in the past as well that hasn't gone away is that it, it, it is a very common ISIS or modern enemy to fill tunnels like that full of hundreds of pounds of explosive mm -hmm. and basically create this massive mass casualty event on an unsuspecting force on the surface or who tries to enter them it's um you, that is why it's a nightmare because just from every angle you look at it um the the basically how to address this problem a known problem is a nightmare very unique to the hamas tunnels which makes them almost all almost standardized is that they use a very prefabricated concrete side and uh cone top to them which allows them again because you, you have to shore a tunnel when you if not it'll collapse as you dig well, Hamas uses a very standardized concrete siding and top concrete that they steal from uh, humanitarian projects um, that are meant to make buildings in Gaza for the citizens. They'll steal that concrete, make these prefabricated sides, which makes them be able to dig faster and faster and faster. And how they got to this metro of 100 miles of tunnels. Israel has the world's biggest and probably most prepared forces, as in engineers that specialize in underground warfare, uh, special tactics, special dogs, special drones, special uh, remote control cars, all these things. The Yalom is a, is a, that's why they're one of the world's most prepared is because they have dedicated decades of soldiers, academics, uh, scientists, all that to try to develop solutions for this very unique problem that is also a, a, an enduring problem for Israel and Israel's military, cross-border tunnels, um, infiltration tunnels, smuggling tunnels, attack tunnels, kidnapping tunnels. This is what they have been looking at for decades. I mean, a lot of people don't understand in urban warfare, sometimes it's just about holding out for a certain amount of time. And that is a Hamas strategy. Like one of the top methods of fighting that they utilize is just buy time for the international community um, allies of them or supporters of them to step in. So the tunnels will be a, like literally the, the key vital capability, source of power of Hamas to try to achieve their objective.
Hamas has not had the the advantage of preparing defenses on the surface because again Israel has the all seen iron but they have had the advantage of digging and digging and digging and using these tunnels for offensive and defensive planning war is a contest of wills and that will is dependent on on time more times than not this will take time there is no rushing um to failure dealing with tunnels